So I think I've said this at the beginning of every one of these Lunch and Learn calls, but these are new this year. They're still very much me playing around and experimenting with what people in the community, which is all of you lovely folk, want. And I think what has been quite clear is you don't want so many of these types of Lunch and Learn sessions. I think the ones that are more popular are the context-based ones. Speaking of which, we have another one coming up in August, which is about the history of preprints, which should be quite a good one. Uh, next month, we do have what should be a really, really good talk um, from Leslie McIntosh, who is part of Digital Science, about research integrity and all these kind of things we could use as trust markers and this new field of forensic science metrics. Didn't even practice that before saying it. Um, so that should, that should be a really, really good talk. Um, the rest of this uh, schedule in its current form, it might change a little bit. So the October Lunch and Learn is going to be cancelled, and I'm not sure yet what is replacing it, but something will replace that. Um, and I, the open access and low middle income countries might also be moved to next year. We do still have a session with Ashley Farley from the Gates Foundation to talk about their new policy around preprint mandates and the uh, lack of covering audit processing charges, which is happening in November. I realize it would be helpful if I updated this table to actually include the days. Uh, there is an, a, a version of this on our Slack, which has the actual date on it rather than just the month. And that's a lesson for me moving forward. Please do provide feedback on these. It's really, really helpful, especially this one. This is the a new version of these Lunch and Learns. This is not so much a context-based session, but more sort of a, a practical skill-based session. I don't know how these are going to go. I don't know if they're going to be useful or not. So feedback really helps. If you don't like it, tell me, and I won't bother doing any more. If you do like it, then we'll have to do some more. So today we're going to spend half an hour talking about how to write a pitch for a preprint focused opinion piece. This is really just how to write a pitch for any opinion piece, because I don't think I've actually put anything in here that is particularly preprint focused until we get to the uh, examples I've got in here, which are pitches that I and others have used previously and that they've all been accepted. If you have any questions, as usual, email me, shout at me on Twitter, Blue Sky, Slack, or have a message over to the ASF bio channels. Um, although it'll probably still be me responding to you. So a sensible starting point for this is why bother writing an opinion piece? One of the things I found, certainly that I've gone out of it, is that it really helps to raise your profile and gain experience in writing for non-scientific audiences and non-scientific articles. This is really, really good within science too, because it means people know who you are. They know your name, they know your face, and, and science, unfortunately, or at least academia, does kind of work on the principle of people knowing who you are. This is a really good way of doing it. There is a danger to doing it, which I've also experienced, which is people also now know your opinion on things, which can be great if they agree with you. If they don't agree with you, it really is not so great. The other reason you should write an opinion piece is you get to share your opinion and your viewpoint on a topic that you care about, which is always nice. People read them and they do give feedback uh, or comments. It's a good way of provoking a discussion, ideally about something you feel strongly about. The really nice thing with opinion pieces is that every now and then you hit a reader who just resonates with what you've written and you'll get lovely messages telling you as much. Or you might spur someone else to write their own version or maybe a counter version. And finally, certainly for our viewpoint, this helps to support and amplify causes that you believe in. So make it preprint related. If you support preprints, it's great to write opinion pieces about why you support preprints and what the benefits are, that kind of thing. And I've broken down writing a piece into what I'm calling the three W's. This is all based on my experience and how I think I approach things. Um, all of that, however, is distilled down from reading an awful lot about how to write an opinion piece, because I had no idea when I started either. So I've called these the three Ws because I think this is a really good way of breaking it down. So you've got why, what, and where. The important thing here is some of these questions within those broader themes do overlap, and that's very deliberate. 
But basically, the why is a lot, it's a bit more focused on you. So why do you want to write an opinion piece? Why should you be the person writing it? Why is now the time to write it? Part of that could be why is the topic interesting or is it timely? What is more about the message? So what is your key message? What is it you want to say? And linking it to what I've just said above, what with why, what is new or different? Which is, again, this could be something that is timely or it could be the topic is there's something new happened in the topic. So maybe a new paper has been published. And then where is more about the outlet you are choosing? So where would you like to publish your opinion piece? But perhaps more importantly, where is your target audience? And really good lesson from a band I quite like. Their motto throughout the 80s was go to your audience. Um, and I think this is a really good point for any writing, actually. Go to where your audience is, not where, don't bring them to you. You do the work and people will read it and it'll be a lot more successful. Is a bit more work up front though. So why? And what I've done is I've broken down each one of these W's into a few more points. These are checklist based. It's not a full list, but I think these will help people get started in terms of right, answering these questions. So starting with why, why do you want to write an opinion piece is a really, really important part. This is including things like your key motivation and also your key message. But you need to figure out why you want to write one before you write one. And why you is something that I think is particularly important when you email the editors. So I don't include the bit about me in the pitch. But whenever I email an editor, I always include a section about who I am, what my expertise is, why it's relevant to their outlet. Um, Effectively, I'm answering why I am a good person to be sharing this opinion. Why now is also a really good question to ask before you write your pitch. What makes this the best time to share this particular opinion? This could be because there's been recent developments or news items. It could be for some other reason around timeliness. I think I've said timeliness a lot now already, and that is largely what a lot of these come down to. It's got to be a good time to write this piece. All these points so far have been about what's new. It could be actually a really good time because there hasn't been anything for a while. So it could be now is a good time to stimulate that discussion again. A lot of opinion pieces are written based on news items. So a, a news piece could come out, or in our case, a new paper could come out, and that then stimulates the writing of an opinion piece. So it is usually based around that. but. Don't restrict yourself too much to that. And then the final why I've got here is why should anyone else care? This should be an easy one to answer if you've answered the first point, which is why do you want to write an opinion piece? But there's no point sharing your opinion if nobody's going to care. I can't imagine many opinions where nobody cares. But you want to be trying to reach as broad an audience as you can. That is within your field. So if you're writing about a new paper, for example, that could be very niche. So your audience might be quite small, but they still need to care about what it is you're writing. What, so what do you want to say? And this to me, I always figure out what my key message is. The one thing I want everyone who's read my opinion piece to take away, which is usually preprints are great, which is nice and easy for me. What is new? And again, this links back to the, the why now. So is it news, is it research? There's usually something new. And I put what is your key message again, because it's really, really important. What audience needs to hear this key message? And that helps you figure out which outlet to, to go to. But also, who do you want to reach? Do you want to reach the audience who are going to agree with you? Or do you want to reach an audience who are going to disagree with you? Because there's usually only two responses to an opinion piece. Some, well, probably most of the time, you want to reach both audiences. That's not always possible. But sometimes there are outlets that allow you to reach an audience you know will not agree with you. And that is a great way of stimulating a discussion in a, a bubble that you're not necessarily usually part of. I, I won't name any, but there's an outlet I'm thinking of writing for, which I don't really like because they're very against preprints in the past. And some of the people who've written for them in the past have been quite mean. But it'd be a really good place to write something incredibly positive and poke them a little bit to stimulate a, a, a strong discussion. Which leads me quite nicely into where. 
So where is the best place to share your message? And opinion pieces are always thought of as this, this written piece. Op-ed actually, I think, originally meant opposite editorial. So it was quite f literally physically where it was in an, an outlet. I would say do not restrict yourself to just writing these. You could share your opinion vocally. So this could be through a podcast. It could be on YouTube. Um, there are other avenues now to do this vocally. There are social media platforms which are entirely vocal based. I'm not sure how successful any of those are. But there are a lot of other options you could use. You could do a, a TikTok, which is opinion piece based. I'm not on TikTok. I don't know how science does there or opinion pieces, but that shows how old I am. But it's good to think about where you want to share your message and in what format. I think 99% of the time it will be written, but don't just restrict that. So, yeah, so question about submitting to an outlet where your view is different to the audience. Would the editors be more likely to, to vote against it? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It, it really depends on the editor. Um, I've seen opinion pieces in places where I wouldn't have expected that opinion to be shared. I think the, the way to think of it is editors want people to read their content. So if it's a good piece, they shouldn't block it just because they don't agree with it. Having said that, there are some who will absolutely do that. Um, there's a there's a, a few good outlets I can think of on the top of my head where they do present sort of opinion pieces from both sides of the same kind of argument. So I wouldn't I would never let a potential editor's opinion stop you from submitting your piece. You can always submit it elsewhere. And there's usually somewhere you'll find who will take it. So again, coming back to target audience, think about who it is, where they're going to be, where they read. Do they read for our purposes? journals could you write this on a blog platform um medium is famous for its opinions from various writers on there but if you've got a good following it is actually a really good place to, to share opinion type pieces when you're thinking of where you want to share this put a lot of thought into why that particular outlet and this is really important to convey this to the editor as i said i do this in the, the email body but you've got to make it clear why this outlet and why not somewhere else. We've just written a piece for a, a national news, well, an international newspaper. Um, it's very more general, so that's one of the reasons we want to choose the outlet. And in that piece, we linked out to a lot of recent articles from that outlet that have discussed the topic we're going to write an opinion piece about. So we're really hammer, we're really focusing down in on that outlet in particular. It's be like when you apply for jobs, people always tell you to tailor your cover letter. Um, do that in this case, exactly. And it really does matter here. Don't just submit a random or vague uh, letter to the editor when you're, when you're writing this in the email. The actual pitch itself will be pretty constant if you're submitting it to different places because the pitch itself isn't really going to change that much. The other thing with where is... I'm just skipping ahead a little bit here as it comes to me, but where also dictates the voice you use to write. Some places you can write quite relaxed. Um, you can throw jokes in there if you wanted to. Some places require you to write a lot more professionally and to a certain standard. Bear that in mind when you're choosing your, your outlet as to how you want to convey that message. When you are choosing an outlet, and in the, again, in this body to, the, to the, the editor, make sure you read any guidelines they have. It's an obvious thing that I don't like mentioning when I talk about writing things, but inevitably people don't read the guidelines. Some places, when it comes to opinion pieces in particular, do not want you to submit an opinion piece in full. They just want to pitch. Other places actually want you to submit the fully written opinion piece. So really important you read the guidelines. Um, they will also tell you how long the pitch should be. If they don't, generally aim for an A4 page. Don't go over that. And also make sure to be clear on why it's important for them to be the outlet. I've already said that, and again, it's, it's really important to, to emphasize that point. The thing I said where we're, we're including links to articles from the outlet, I think that's a really good approach of, of showing them that they are the place to, to have this discussion especially if they've got different opinions in there, coming back to the question in the chat, 
But even if they don't, try to link to their own articles as much as you can. Don't overdo it for the sake of doing it, but if you can, it's good. I said these overlap a lot. Um, they really do overlap a lot. And that is, again, it's, it's it's a deliberate design and coming up with these three Ws. There might be a better piece out there on how to write an opinion piece. Um, but the thing to emphasize here is that you are the center of all of these questions. Opinion pieces are more personal. And so you are the linchpin to the opinion piece. That means you can't just be in anyone who's going to share their opinion. That kind of comes back to who would care. You don't need to be the most famous person in the field to write opinion pieces. I wrote my first ones when I wasn't. You, it helps if you have background in that field. So we're talking about preprints, so we'll stick with that theme. When I wrote my first opinion piece, it was on the back of two uh, preprints at the time, actually, about preprints. So I'd established myself as someone in that field. I don't think at the time anyone really knew who I was beyond that particularly. But that it, you, you do need to have some background in what you're writing about. There's a lot of opinion pieces with academia in mind where they're talking about research culture more broadly. There, you already have the background because you're in academia or you have been in academia. So don't, again, don't let the idea of how much of an expert or what being an expert means restrict you from writing an opinion piece. And I've picked out a few things that overlap these areas as the most important bits, but why now topic, why it's interesting and your key message and audience. Those, those are things I, I do not write in a, well, I don't even think about one without answering these questions. General tips on writing the pitch itself. Again, read the guidelines and be professional in your communication. Really should not have to say any of that, but I do. Read previous opinion pieces in your target outlet. Um, ideally on similar topics. If not, doesn't matter. It just helps you get a feel for what the narrative voice is in those pieces, how long they are, that kind of thing. It's also helpful to read on similar topics that have been published in other places to get you a good idea of what other people are saying. Question about what um, about outlets that don't have guidelines available publicly. Surprising number don't. Um, I limit it, the pitch at an A4 page. Try, I try to be less. You'll see some of the examples here. One of the pitches is a single paragraph. Uh, another one is slightly longer, which I think was almost an A4 page. I always email the editor regardless of what policy is available anyway. Um, so I think anything I'm saying here applies to whether there's a policy or not. If there are no guidelines, submit a pitch. Don't just write the full opinion piece out. And then the editor will usually tell you if they have any guidelines. Um, have an idea of what your full opinion piece will look like in your mind, at least. But I do that as I draft the, the uh, pitch anyway. That's how I kind of I do both at the same time. Oh, I always try and send a prospective email first to make initial contact so that the editor recognizes that a name has emailed them before. It's not a big deal, but I think it can help. I've already said this, but again, with a lot of this, I'm reiterating it because it's important. Tailor the pitch to the outlet. Don't just mass spam these because you'll get nowhere at all. I don't think I've submitted a pitch yet that hasn't been accepted. Um, not that I've written a huge number of them, but I've written a few now. And I spend a lot of time tailoring the pitch to the, the particular outlet. When you're writing the pitch and for the longer opinion piece, don't be afraid to express your opinion. That's kind of the whole point of an opinion piece. And don't be too worried about being overly balanced. I always think a good opinion piece will present the other side. And I think a lot of editors will probably agree with that statement, but it doesn't have to be, a, it's not a 50-50 a piece. It's your opinion, your viewpoint, just as with good signs, don't cherry pick things to, to, to do that. Make sure if you've got an opinion, you're backing up with evidence and that evidence is robust and good. Try to include the alternative viewpoint, um, even if it's just a brief discussion. So before the pitch, contact the editor. Um, it's also a really good opportunity when you do this to scope the fit for both you and your op-ed. 
that gives the editor a chance to say no before you've done too much work. If there are guidelines, read them and stick to them. If there are not guidelines, as I've said, max of an A4 page. And before you write the pitch, um, be very prepared for negative comments or strong dissenting opinions. I've had those on some of the things I've written. Um, this is, I, I view this as a good sign. People are reading it and they're reacting to it, which is what a good opinion piece should do. But not everyone will agree with you. Not everyone has the same opinion. Some people can be quite negative um, and have very strong opinions. I've, other people have written about more controversial topics. I've seen some of the comments they've gotten. Make sure you're ready and you accept that will or might happen before you write the pitch. Because if you don't accept this point, you don't want to be writing an opinion piece. For the pitch itself, stick to the guidelines again. Otherwise, communicate with brevity. So I think it's just general good writing advice. Say as much as you can with as few words as possible. Don't waffle on because nobody wants to read something where someone's rambling on. But don't be so horribly tight with your wording that it's not a fun thing to read. You can get a good idea by reading the other opinion pieces uh, in that outlet or on your topic. Make sure you provide context to the opinion. Be clear on why this is different, timely, interesting. What Basically, why should people care? Explain why you are the best person to write this. And this is what you do in the email body. You don't do this in the actual pitch. Include helpful graphics, if you have any. Um, I think, I don't think many places restrict the use of graphics in the opinion piece. You can't really get away with more than a single panel figure once in an opinion piece, but it depends on the the particular piece. Keep the pitch short um, and don't forget the importance of that email body. That's where you talk about you a lot more. And in response to that point in the chat, why are you the best person to do it? Because you have an opinion. I think there's, there's no reason beyond that. Everyone's opinion is worth listening to. I think everyone's opinion is worth sharing. If you are, I'll give you an example. If you are a really good science communicator, for example, then you're really good at writing general pieces, whatever that may be. You're an ideal person to write an opinion piece because you can do it in a way that will really connect with an audience, even if it's not a topic you particularly care about. On the flip side, if it's a topic you really care about, then at the very least, you will write with passion, and that will come through in the piece, and then that will also be a reason people care and read it. If you want to write an opinion piece, I think just, just do it. Um, when I say best person, I mean basically just covering the background elements, why you can write about it. So here is the first of a few examples I'm going to go through with you. This is one I wrote 2021. Uh, in the midst of COVID. And this was actually in response to another, well, a few pieces that had been written in various outlets about the danger of using preprints to share uh, pandemic-related research. It's a common complaint we have against preprints all the time, but it really, really picked up during the pandemic. And I thought this was a really, really important time to write about this and why it's actually not such a cause for a law. So I've got what, why, where, and I'm just going to go through the pitch to, to highlight where I've done this in the pitch. As you can see, the pitch is a single paragraph. It, it, it's very short. Um, and this, was this invited? Can't remember. This, I think I approached them. I think. So where it was it published in The Scientist, which is a great uh, online magazine. It was chosen because it's a place a lot of scientists generally go to to read. And so I wanted a very broad audience for this. I wanted to reach as many people as I could. This felt like a good place to do that. Um, I wrote a similar one, but although it wasn't on this topic as such in the conversation, which is another really good place. So in the opinion piece, the why is that many people had questioned the reliability and trustworthiness of preprints for disseminating science, particularly relating to public health. And so you can see why 
it's very clear in here. And this is the the timeliness part, um, but also the importance of the of actually talking about this kind of stuff. What is highlighted in blue here? So this is what I'm actually going to convey. So recent evidence is part of that what question. And I quite very clearly label out what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to discuss this data from that we had produced. So this is uh, a preprint at the time, comparing preprints from the pandemic to their published versions. But it was other people who had also done similar studies. And basically, I was, the piece was going to establish that there is trust around using preprints to communicate pandemic-related science. So I answered my questions in a, a single paragraph, which I always think is actually more challenging than a longer piece. Uh, and then you, this is the title of the piece, if you want to go and read it. And you'll see that the pitch translates to the fuller piece. This was a more recent pitch uh, and full piece that was written by one of our 2023 fellows, Sadipa. So this was all about um, preprints and their use across India. So it was very relevant that we chose India Biosciences as an outlet because this is a great, again, general place for a lot of scientists and it's India-based scientists. So it was a perfect place for this kind of article. This outlet has multiple different types of article. You can see here, this is a column. Um, it's always worth reading if these are available, what your pitch would, what your opinion piece would fit under and outline that when you write to the editor. And then again, this is another part of their, their categories here, which is called the Indian scenario. It makes a lot of sense why we chose that one. Again, that's something you should include in the pitch to the editor if you can. And there's a link here if you did want to go out and, and read this piece. Really good piece from Sadiba. So you can see this is a longer pitch this time. I've already put in the where. Um, this was almost a full A4 page. So this gave us a lot more space to break things down a bit more. And actually, before I do that, you can see we've outlined in bullet point form some of the key points we're going to talk about and, and made them bold to really emphasize the flow of the piece. When you have a longer pitch, I think it's always a, a good opportunity to actually outline how the article will flow in your mind. And so this is why I said earlier on, it's good if you can have at least mentally mapped out your opinion piece already. So why is answered a couple of times throughout this, as is what? So we're answering those questions throughout the whole opinion piece. We don't just group it all into one bit. And this is really important to keep, you're basically repeating and answering the same questions over and over to really reinforce for the editor why, where, and what. The op-ed itself, um, the checklist applies equally to the whole thing. You're still answering those kind of questions. Write broadly and own your expertise or your opinion. Try and read other op-eds in that space and outlet. Include relevant evidence where it exists and acknowledge other viewpoints. Don't dwell on them, but do acknowledge them. Write for the audience. So if the outlet is not a scientific one, do not use jargon at all if you can. If you have to, use it as sparingly as possible. Include an image or graphic if you can, don't force it in there, but it's nice. And always end a opinion piece, always end a lot of things to do with a call to action. And yes, so some pitches are very similar to the actual piece itself. It's just a bit more of a focus on the reason why the pitch should be published. Um, those longer formats, you, you really are kind of basically writing it out. It's just you're emphasizing why and what you're going to say rather than actually saying it. After the article, engage with feedback and comments. Promote your work as much as you can because you want people to read it. It's an opinion piece. You want people to read everything you write. And again, I just want to come back to that. Be prepared for negative comments or strong dissenting opinions. Got grass in my hair. It's really important to, re to, to emphasize this point. Um, depending on your opinion, you can get backlash and it People out there are mean. Um, so just make sure you are ready for that if it happens. I've had lots of very, very nice comments on some of the things I've written. Some people have disagreed with me, but they've done so constructively and it's exposed me to a think a way of thinking that maybe I hadn't thought about before. So I think they're, they're worthwhile for the person writing it too. And I said, always end on a call to action. So I think for those of you listening here, 
it would be good if you could write two or three ideas out for potential opinion pieces you might write or could write. Pick your favorite of those three, two to three, and map it out according to those three Ws. And then go away and pitch it. Write one. There's nothing stopping you. I think that is my last slide. It is my last slide. Mm -hmm. So remember to leave feedback. It really, really helps. I don't know what I'm doing with these sessions. Um, so you telling me how they go over helps decide whether we keep running them like this or we change it up a little bit. The next practical lunch and learn this year is not going to happen. It's going to be replaced with something else. But the next lunch and learn in two months time is on the history of PDF preprints. So it's another context-based one, which I quite like doing. I think everyone here is subscribed to our newsletter, but if you're not, do that as well. I think that's it. That is it. I've included a bunch of different links here for tips and things that I've read in the past that are useful for how to write an opinion piece or how to write a pitch for an opinion piece. Um, the Open Notebook here, this is a really good link because they've got pictures from actual journalists. Um, and it's a really good database to go through and, and see how other people write them for various different outlets. Okay, so question about pitching to channels that are not focused on writing. So maybe a local radio show that isn't particularly science focused, but sometimes have some science segments. I think it's the same kind of situation. You would, there's still a, so it's a producer instead of an editor in that situation, but contact the producer and your pitch is still kind of what I've described. So you still got outline the email body bit really doesn't change. In terms of the pitch itself, um, again, I wouldn't say that would change too much. I think the one thing that maybe you would want to do in the whole thing there is emphasize anything you've done in the past that is like that. A lot, a lot of radio shows, again, I've done a few, um, they will invite you on, but there's nothing stopping you pitching ideas to them. And they don't really seem to screen people too much for their ability to talk on the radio. Um, some of them definitely do. I'm aware that some shows will have a, a call with a person first. And if you're not very good, I imagine they won't then invite you back on. This also applies not just to radio shows, but podcasts. They are probably the, the better route to go down for this kind of thing. Um, and there you're not really pitching yourself as an opinion piece. You're pitching your contribution to a show. Um, it could be a small bit. It could be as a guest on an episode where you're talking about something that you know about. Um, we're actually doing this as part of the Community Action Group, if you're watching this in 2024, or for those of you here. Um, we're writing a bunch of different opinion pieces, landscaping articles, and one of the things we're going to do is pitch to a few different podcasts to see if they'll have us on as guests to talk about preprint and stuff like that. And the way we're going to approach that is exactly the same as we've approached the pitches for written pieces. There's not a, a big difference. 